welcome to our journey into the fascinating world of neanderthals one of the most mysterious and enigmatic species to ever walk the earth neanderthals a homo neanderthalensis were our closest evolutionary cousins sharing many similarities with modern humans they lived in europe and parts of western asia between 4 lakh to around 40000 years ago thriving in a variety of environments from arid deserts to icy tundras the neanderthals have a very long evolutionary history the best known neanderthals lived between around 130 to around 40000 years ago after which they mysteriously disappear from the fossil records Neanderthals evolved in Europe and Asia while modern humans our species Homo sapiens were evolving in Africa despite their close relations to us Neanderthals remain shrouded in mystery with many questions still unanswered about their behavior culture and biology in this video we will take a deep dive into the world of Neanderthals exploring their origins physical features lifestyle and interactions with other hominid species and the most important question of what happened to them Neanderthals were well adapted to their environment and had a number of physical characteristics that distinguished them from modern humans Neanderthals had robust muscular bodies that were well suited for hunting and surviving in harsh environments. They also had thicker bones and shorter limbs than modern humans, which helped them to retain heat in cold climates. Additionally, their skull was long and low, unlike the rounded skull of modern humans, and their face showed mid-facial prognathism, a feature in which the middle portion of the face was more anteriorly placed. Despite their unique physical appearance, studies show that Neanderthals had a fully modern brain with an average cranial capacity of around 1300 cc in females and around 1600 in males. They were skilled hunters who regularly pursued large game such as bison, deer, and even woolly mammoths using a variety of tools to aid in their hunting. including spears knives and scrapers they also engaged in a number of other activities such as gathering fishing and using fire one of the most distinctive features of neanderthals was their large bore ridges which served to protect their eyes from the glare of sun and may have provided additional support for their powerful jaw muscles they also had larger and thicker teeth than modern humans with torodontism a feature characterized by enlarged pulp cavities in molars scratch marks on teeth indicate that they were used to manipulate and hold objects finally neanderthals were known to bury their dead often placing them in elaborate graves that included offerings such as flowers or animal bones This suggests that they had some form of belief in afterlife or spiritual realm and underscores their capacity for complex social behavior. For many years, Neanderthals were portrayed as brutish and primitive, lacking the capacity for symbolic or creative thought. However, Recent discoveries have challenged this view, revealing that Neanderthals had a rich and varied cultural life. Some evidences suggest that Neanderthals engaged in symbolic and creative thought. Neanderthals made jewelry using animal teeth, ivory, and eagle talons, some of which were over 1 lakh years old. They may also have used pigments for body decoration and camouflage. Cave paintings in three Spanish sites have been discovered to be over 64,000 years old, indicating that Neanderthals have painted them. These paintings which include depictions of animals, linear signs, geometric shapes, hand stencils and hand prints predate the arrival of modern humans in Europe by at least 20,000 years. The use of uranium thorium dating of carbonate crusts overlying the paintings helped to challenge the previous assumption that only modern humans created cave paintings. However, there is still no clear evidence of Neanderthals creating representational art based on real life sources such as animals or people. Neanderthals were once thought to be exclusively meat-eating hunters, but analysis of dental calculus suggests that they also ate plants and fungi. They have even consumed marine animals. While they had the capability of using fire, it's unknown whether they regularly cooked food. 
Many people assume that modern humans wiped out Neanderthals, as it is commonly believed that our species was superior to Neanderthals. However, this idea is an oversimplification and questionable for several reasons. Hypotheses advocating competition have proposed several possible competitive advantages to modern humans. These include technological advances such as better clothing and shelter, improved hunting techniques, and more diverse subsistence strategies. Social differences such as gender division of labor, large group sizes, and more elaborate social networks among modern humans. Demographic factors possibly include differences in birth and mortality rates or the interbirth intervals. Differences in their life history and demography, including faster growth and possibly shorter life expectancy in Neanderthals. While defenders of this theory point to archaeological sites where modern human remains appear above Neanderthal remains, but this could simply mean that modern humans were not able to enter those caves until Neanderthals left. There is very less evidence to support the notion that modern humans actively eliminated the Neanderthals. Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago, while humans arrived in Europe only 45,000 years ago. This makes it unlikely that modern humans were solely responsible for their extinction, as there was only a short window of 5,000 years for contact. Others propose that Neanderthals may have already become extinct before modern humans arrived in Europe. Meanwhile, some recent theories attribute the extinction to climatic instability during the last ice age of Pleistocene epoch. The connection between Neanderthals and their environment during the Pleistocene era is significant because it was the time in which they evolved and lived. The Pleistocene featured glacial advances and retreats that significantly altered the European landscape, climate, and resource availability. One of the possible effects of climate change would have been demographic stress or reduction in population. Colder periods and glacial retreats would have significantly reduced the carrying capacity of the ecosystem. The theory is supported by analysis of the ancient DNA of Neanderthals in Valle de Goba cave in northern Spain. The researchers discovered that Neanderthals from the Western Europe who lived after 50,000 had very limited genetic diversity, even less than the current population of Ireland. This implies that Western European Neanderthals went through a period of reduced population due to a serious bottleneck effect which left Western Europe uninhabited for some time. The demographic crisis seemed to coincide with a period of extreme cold in Western Europe. New paleoclimate records from caves in Romania reveal two cold, dry periods that occurred between 44,000 years ago, lasting for 1,000 years, and 40,800 years ago, lasting for 600 years, resulting in year-round permafrost. The role of climate in the extinction of Neanderthals has been discounted for two reasons. First, they had survived previous cold phases and it is debated whether the climate record accurately represents all of Europe, as there is evidence that other parts of the continent had a mild climate during the same period. Finalison approaches these problems from different perspectives. According to Finalison, the common belief that Neanderthals were adopted to cold of Ice Age Europe is wrong. They typically lived in woodland, savanna, and wetland areas and were under stress throughout their existence, never fully recovering. They were doomed to extinction by the time the classic Neanderthal emerged around 1,25,000 years ago. The reason for their extinction was over specialization on hunting large mammals within a small range of habitats, low tolerance for environmental change leading to population fragmentation, low colonization, and high extinction rates. Even when conditions improved, they were unable to recover and went extinct. Neanderthal demise was therefore one of the many late Pleistocene megafauna extinctions caused by loss of an environment with no modern analog. The companion 
ignimbrite eruption, a volcanic eruption near Naples, Italy around 39,000 years ago is believed to have contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals. This is evidenced by severe reduction of plant pollens and possibly mammals hunted by Neanderthals around the time. One major question related to Neanderthal extinction is why didn't the modern humans move into Neanderthal territory before they actually did or vice versa. Modern humans and Neanderthals diverged between around 5 lakh to around 8 lakh years ago from the last common ancestor possibly Homo hedelbergensis with Neanderthals living in Eurasia and modern humans living in Africa. A recent research claims that modern humans migrated out of Africa and reached the Levant area in the Middle East much before they spread further into Eurasia. On the other hand, Neanderthals never moved south of the Levant. The two species interacted intermittently in the region for a long time, with some low-level interbreeding occurring. Later, around 45 to 50,000 years ago, modern humans spread into Eurasia and eventually replaced the Neanderthals within a few thousand years. The re-establishment of contact between Neanderthals and modern humans in the Levant would have exposed each species to novel pathogens carried by the other, leading to a considerable disease burden that decreased population dynasties near the contact front. This limited and localized the interaction between the two species, but some contact continued, resulting in transmission of immune-related genes through occasional inbreeding and pathogen spillover. Bands of each species gradually adopted and acquired tolerance to the novel pathogens through adoptive interrogation, reducing disease burden and allowing other processes to drive population dynamics. Eventually, the barrier to full interspecies contact and cross-regional migration was removed, destabilizing the front of interaction and leading to Neanderthal replacement. Why did modern humans replace Neanderthals and not the vice versa? The relationship between modern humans and Neanderthals was influenced by differences in pathogen complexes and genetic diversity. Neanderthals may have been more vulnerable to modern human diseases due to their adaptation to a large number of pathogens, because biotic diversity on many taxonomic scales is higher in tropics including in human pathogens, leading to earlier release of modern humans from the disease burden. As modern humans expanded further into Eurasia, they may have encountered bands of Neanderthals who were more vulnerable to modern diseases. One hypothesis suggests that when modern humans and Neanderthals came in contact, differences in their genetic diversity could have led to a significant epidemics in the less diverse populations due to immunological consequences. Ancient genomic analysis indicates that modern humans had greater genetic diversity than Neanderthals, which means that modern humans may have been less susceptible to Neanderthal diseases than Neanderthals were to modern human diseases. Diseases may have played a significant role in the interspecies dynamics of modern humans and Neanderthals, as suggested by studies comparing their genomes these studies indicate that introgression of Neanderthal genes related to disease immunity and tolerance was adaptive and that natural selection favored introgressed lineages that included immune-related genes. Recent studies show that introgression was not symmetric between the species. Interbreeding has been proposed as a possible reason for Neanderthal extinction. The most vocal proponent of hybridization hypothesis is Eric Trinkos of Washington University. Trinkos claims various fossils as hybrid individuals, including the child of Lagervillo, a skeleton found at Lagervalho in Portugal. Confirmation that modern humans interbred with both Neanderthals and Denisovians came from Max Planck Institute. After sequencing the Neanderthal genome from remains found in Croatia, the team compared this with the genome of modern people from China, France, Africa and New Guinea and found that all non-Africans today have as much as 4% of Neanderthal DNA in their genome and that the interbreeding happened soon after Homo sapiens arrived in Southwest Asia.
The interbreeding between Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens is supported by genetic data indicating that there were several instances of interbreeding resulting in fertile offsprings. The social milieu that led to the sexual encounters is not fully understood, but examples from chimpanzees and modern hunter-gatherers and pastoralist populations suggest that opportunistic and sometimes covert couplings may have taken place. It is interesting that there are multiple examples of interbreeding between late Neanderthals and Homo sapiens evidenced in the fossil record, but all except one are from Homo sapiens. This may be due to lack of genetic data from late Neanderthals. It could suggest that hybrids within Neanderthal social groups was rare or not viable. If future genomic studies confirm that Neanderthal DNA entered the Homo sapiens gene pool but not the reverse, this could have contributed to the decline of Neanderthal populations. If fertile Neanderthals were regularly absorbed into Homo sapiens groups during the 40 to 45,000 time period, this would have removed them from the Neanderthal gene pool, which could not be sustained for long in small hunter-gatherer groups. Dispersing Homo sapien groups may have acted like sponges and absorbed pockets of late Neanderthals, contributing to the eventual demise of the Neanderthals as a viable population. The extinction of Neanderthals is a topic of ongoing scientific investigation and debate and none of the theories is conclusive. However, these theories are not necessarily mutually exclusive. It's possible that a combination of factors contributed to Neanderthal extinction. For example, it could have been that the Neanderthals were already facing environmental pressure due to climate change or other factors and that the arrival of modern humans and the competition for resources further weakened their population. Additionally, it is possible that interbreeding with modern humans led to genetic dilution or spread of disease that were particularly devastating for Neanderthals. Therefore, it's important to consider multiple factors and potential interactions between them when studying the extinction of Neanderthals. From these theories, we can learn about the complex interaction and dynamics between different species and their environment, as well as the potential impact of factors such as climate change and disease on human evolutionary history thank you for watching kindly like share and subscribe to the channel for more educational content